Hi, I'm Andy Parr, and you're watching The Gadget Guru. As you can see, I'm standing behind a, well, let's call it a pretty unusual looking bike. This is the Rad Power Bikes. That's the manufacturer. This model is the Rad Mini. There's a few things we're going to go through today. We're going to end up with if this is something you should buy. Now, I'm going to tell you this up front. What makes this bike unique is that it's electric. It can be used with an electric pedal assist, or you can ride this like a standard bicycle. Also, this thing folds pretty much in half. So if you're looking to put this on a motorhome or throw it in the back of a car, or you have limited storage area, this might be the bike for you. So we're gonna go through the review, and that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. Okay, let me start off by saying this is part two of a two-part review. In part one, and there's a link right up here, I go through what it takes to get this thing out of the box and get it assembled. Now, while this company has what I thought was a really good video online that showed you step by step of all the stuff that you need to do, well, I was a little disappointed in it because while the review looked good before you bought the bike, once you got the bike and took it out of the box and referred back to the review, well, it seems that they either missed some steps or maybe I'm missing some steps. So you combine that with their instruction manual, which leaves a lot to be desired, and then a few places keep saying, for more information, refer to the video. Well, you already know what I think of that video. Now, let me tell you where we left off on the video. You know, the first thing, and, and, I, uh, and I'll tell you up front, let me give good marks to their tech support. Not only were, th were the sales support people good prior to the sale, that the tech support were very good when I called and I had an issue. While the book says that the tires should be inflated 20 to 30 PSI, that on the phone they said, oh, 15 to 20 to 25. So I put 20 pounds of pressure. They came in with zero pressure. Now, this is going to give me an opportunity just to say something about this product right here. You see this right here? This is a Viair portable compressor. Now, let me tell you why I purchased this for my bus. The first thing, it's small, it's compact, and it's built to be absolutely super powerful. Well, you know, on here, and through the reviews I read, it says that this will pump up to 150 pounds of pressure. Well, on my bus, I have between 90 and 110 or 120 pounds of pressure. I want to tell you, it failed miserably when I used it on the bus just the other day. I was just trying to top off my tires, just putting a few extra pounds in there. However, I'm glad I had it when it came to the bike because I just clipped this thing. To, I could clip it on the bus, but that's too complicated. I clipped it to my car's battery, and let me tell you, this pumped them right up. You know, even came with some nice features. So for the bike, for small and portability, I give it very good. If the people from Viera are watching, here, I'll turn it this way so you can see the label. They have it so it's facing right side up if you're holding it. Uh, if they're watching, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Send me a note. Maybe we can figure this out. Maybe I have a bad one. The other thing we were facing is that there was a bad squeak. Now, that was an issue, and I called tech support on a Friday afternoon. It ends up that there is, and let's see if we can get into this in camera. There's a little adjustment here that you can use with one of the, uh, uh, one of the included tools. That it was just a little bit too tight on the disc, on both the front and the rear. So I want to show you something here. You know, on the manuals, uh, again, I'm a big sticker on good manuals. This manuals, I don't, I, I want to give this thing about a C minus. It's just missing a lot. So uh, it was a good reference guide. Again, many times it says go back to video. You know what I think about that. Now, here is the manual on its control panel here. And if you open it up, you know, you see a lot of Chinese. There's only a few pages here, but I got to tell you, it is pretty de easy to use. So as much flack as I'm getting it, uh, we did figure it out. Now, uh, that brings up a good point here. You know, I'm to understand that Red Power Bikes is an American company, and there's no doubt in my mind this thing came out of China. I think I made a joke up front, Ken, Ken the Tires. I've never heard of them. They might be American, but I doubt it. Now, how this thing comes out of the box, and again, it's in the other video, it's partially assembled. You need to put the wheel in, which was the hardest part. This front uh, basket thing or uh, rack was not that easy. You have to put on the light. Other than that, it's, I'd say the skill level 
you know, it, I, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's not the most difficult. If you had three of them, the third one would be a lot easier to put together than the first one. Now, let's go through, and I know you're going to see a lot of videos from bicycle enthusiasts and experts. They're going to tell you all the little things that you really don't need to know. Here's what you need to know. It's a seven-speed, what do you call that? It's a seven-speed Shimano. It has a seven-speed. It has a seven-speed. Shimano gear changing device here. And let me tell you, it works pretty well. It's just like you see on most bikes today. You hit one button to downshift, you have another button to upshift. Uh, I've driven this thing just a few miles, and let me tell you, I put a lot of pedal time on it. It was very smooth, it worked very reliable. The other thing you need to know, it has a control panel. Just like a motorcycle, you have a rear brake, you have a front brake. You have a throttle. Now, let me tell you something that kind of confused me a little bit on this. You know how when you get a motorcycle and you come on and you turn on the key, the key's on this side. I'm going to turn it on. Now, I'm going to also come here and press the mode to turn on your display because that way if you're in pedal mode, you, you know, you, you get to see your speed. Now, if I turn that, notice, you know, my throttle, which is right over here, notice how it moves forward. Now, they have this red button over here. Now, if for those of us who ride motorcycles, you know, that's pretty much a start button. But on this, it seems like the stop button. That when you turn it on, that way it keeps it from going. That was a real head scratcher to me. Because, you know, if you think about it, when you first start it, it seems that you would press it to start it, and then it would go on you. Okay, that's just me being myself and then complaining. By the way, I showed in the previous video a bell helmet. Let me tell you something. I really like this helmet. I can't tell you exactly which one it is. I think it's the, it says the word stoker on it. But it is comfortable, it breathes well, it fit well. I got the medium for my size head. It does have some kind of adjustability here on the rear of the helmet. Out of the box, it just fit me perfectly. No complaints here. And yeah, wear a helmet. Now here's the charger. This was very confusing in the instruction book. In the instruction book, it says it has a rubber cover over here. Well, that's not rubber. It's kind of a plastic cover right in here. Now, it also said there's an off and on switch uh, for the battery. Now, under the seat post, they have one of these little LED gauges here which, where that, uh, you know, you, you can see a bar graph of, of how much juice you have left in here. I couldn't get this darn thing to work. What it, and, and the problem is they really don't explain in the book. What you have to do, you have another key position you have to put it in. So on the charger, when you plug the charger in, of course, one end goes into the battery. The other end goes into the wall. Well, I'm looking on this thing for any sort of indicator light, including, including that bar graph up to you. See if I was getting juice. I wasn't. Now, I had this thing laying down, and it was upside down, and I noticed it has this on it, a charge and power light. Well, you need to have, it has a little color coding on this. My complaint, yes, it worked fine. The instruction book just didn't explain it. So here's one of my editorials. Hey, rad power bikes, you want to get fewer tech support calls, redo your video, Rewrite your instruction manual, throw it online as a PDF, you'll get fewer calls. Now, the battery does pop out, and it is pretty easy. Let me just get around here. Okay, the first thing you do, you have to remove your seat, and that comes up like this, and I think I made a point in the last video. Within 48 hours of buying this, found that they came up with what they have, a brand new spring seat. That would have been nice if they were to offer that as an option. What do I need two of them for? Okay, and then to pull this up, what you have to do, you have to turn the key all the way to the left and then just pull it right up. Oops, that was the little collar thing here. I'll mess with that in a minute. Okay, now, here is that display that I was talking about here. What you have to do to get this to work, I think you have to turn the key all the way and then press and hold. I know that camera probably can't see it. Let me come in real close on this one here. And then you can come in here. You know, this is good if you're charging it away from the bike, but it really doesn't do you a lot of good if it's on the bike. And it does go back in pretty easily. That is if I can figure out how to do that collar. Now, it does have that little locking thing here, and that's, what, that's why you have to use the key, because it, it keeps it from falling out on you, I guess. But then this way, if you're using it, and you're going to work or school or whatever, you can take it out, and it's pretty easy to get in or out. Now, let me go and put the seat back in.
Okay, I think we're good to go here. Now the other thing I like, you know, you really don't need tools to fold it up and take it back out. Now, let's get down to the big thing. How easy is this to fold down? Now, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off. You basically have a few pivot points here. Let's do the bars first. Now, when you come around here, this has like a double redundancy type of failsafe device. You get it, and that's a little difficult to pull down, and then you pull it again, and then that allows your bars to bend. So let's see if I can get this right the first time. We're going to kind of go like this. Now I'm going to get this, this clip here. We get it, we move forward, we pull up, and then it comes in. Oh, before I do that, let's fold the pedals flat, and I'll do the same on the other side. You just push and pull. Oops. Let me put the kickstand up. Here, let me get this pulled up, and it hinges us around. Now granted, I know I'm the picture of Grace, probably a lot better with two people, but if you see, this thing folds up pretty small. Now, it's funny, when I purchased it, I said, how much does it weigh? They said 50 pounds. Well, they forgot to tell me about the seven and a half pounds for the battery. It's closer to 60 pounds. But if you see, I lifted, put it in on the Jeep. I'm not a weightlifter, I'm a little guy here. And it works pretty well. They have a little strap over here that you put it in. I threw it in the back of the Jeep yesterday, got it in, got it out, it wasn't too bad. Um, but I have to tell you, for an electric portable bike, this thing's pretty good. Here, let's go on and put it back together. And I tell you, the connectors are pretty solid here. And then I'll get this up here, pull this up, pull this up. This comes around, this goes in, kicks in on this side. And it's down. Now the other things you need to know, I think I discussed the brakes front and rear. They're both this. They work very well. Now other videos I saw, they said, you know, if you're going to use this for like a beach bike or sand bike, you might want to put a lower air pressure in. I'm not an expert. I'm not the guy to ask about this. Now they do have a light on the front. And I have to do it. Uh, first, turn it on. And then you press your mode and your up button simultaneously. And then the light comes on and you get an indicator right here on your dash. Now for the rear light, let me turn the bike around here a little bit. For the rear light, it's a little different. Okay, this is not connected anyway, you know, to the controls on the bike. It's just a manual switch. You press one for a constant on. Press it again for a stroke. Press it again to turn off. There's no, no braking mechanism on here. Oh, I'm getting that squeaking again. That thing went away. And again, I have only have four miles on it, but this just came back after I did that. Uh, but at least I now know how to adjust that. And again, they told me that you don't have to get about 20 miles on it. The disc brakes will see it on it. Okay, now let's talk about the different modes. As I said earlier in the video, this has various modes. You have a pedal mode, just like a normal bicycle. You have five different pedal assist modes. That means when you're pedaling, depending on what level you're in, the electric motor will kick in at a specific time and give you a certain kind of uh, bolt of energy, let's call it. And then the last one is just pure electric mode, just like you were, you know, on a scooter or something like that. But just like I always say, I said this in my old vlog videos, I'm going to say it today. I'm not taking off without a helmet. Okay, I have the Bell Stoker helmet on. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Here, let me go in and downshift it here. I'm going to start off about fourth gear. You hear the derailleur move just a bit. And I'm just using this as a regular bicycle. Pedal assist mode is on zero. So I'm pedaling. Remember, as I said before, you have two brakes, just like a motorcycle. The right is your rear, the left is your front. Now we'll come over here. I'll make a quick turn. And I'll put it in pedal assist mode number one. And to do that, I just press the button. And then... As I pedal, I just felt just the slightest bit of electric motor kick in. Not a whole lot here, but just a little bit. But remember, that's just pedal assistance one. And again, I'm just starting this off in, in fourth gear. So nothing really dramatic here. So we're going to do all the demonstrations from just a stop here. Pedal assist two. Now, as I start pedaling right there, the motor kicked in. I can still pedal, and the pedaling is moving the bike forward, but the motor kind of kicked in there too. And right there at the end of the turn, not at the apex, kind of toward the end of the turn, the motor kicked in. Now, guess what we're going to do now? 
We're going to do the same thing in pedal assist mode number three. So you see me pedaling and the motor kicked in right there. It gave me a little bit more thrust there. And then remember when you kick the brake, the motor stops. I'm pedaling. It, it did. It came, the electric came in toward the end of the turn there. Now we'll try pedal assist mode four. Okay. There, that thing really kicked in. You could, I don't know if you could hear that motor kicked in. All right. And then as I pedal, and then when I stop pedaling, the motor kicks off. Okay, we only have one more mode to go. I'm sure you're happy to hear that. Pedal assist mode five. Okay, as soon as I start pedaling, that thing kicks off. And here, I just hit 15 miles an hour very quickly. I have some friends who think they have some really fast Mustangs. I'm ready to race them. Okay, so now you've seen that. What we're going to do now at a stop, I'm just going to go pure electric mode. The throttle in here, I'm just going to twist. And here we go. I don't have a long runway here, but I'm at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Got up to 17 miles an hour there before I uh, hit my rear brake and gave myself a little bit of skip. Now, as you can tell on here, the motor's pretty quiet. I mean, it's an electric motor. I'm not really getting any chain noise or anything. I guess what I have to do now, I'm going to revert back to my childhood. And I'm going to tell you what we used to do. We used to pretend we were on big, big motorcycles. Okay, see what this are? Playing cards. Really couldn't find any traditional clothespins, so I'm going to put these in the spokes here. Let's see how this thing does. Okay, I have two playing cards. This is going to be like a V-twin. Here we go. Get your motor running. Okay, this thing really is fun to ride. Whether you're pedaling, pedaling is pedal assisted, or you're using an electric motor. And I think, a great summary on this thing, it's really a hoot. You know, I'm a little guy. I weigh 135 pounds when I'm wet. I had a buddy of mine jump on it to see what he thought of it. Here's that video. Now, All don't right. hit anything. Now, you're not wearing a helmet. I already told people, you have to wear a helmet. You have to wear a helmet. Okay. So, I'm going to get out of the way here. You're I'm just pedaling. Now, I'm giving a little assist. Now I'm just pedaling, and now I'm out of sight. Now I'm giving it assist. It's got, it's got oodles of power with the assist on there. The only thing I'm afraid with this bike is that people would tend to just use the power assist rather than pedaling it. Plenty of power. When I was driving on Hearthside Grove here, I said, you know, here's what I'm realizing. You can use this bike like for exercise. And then when you want a little power, you can either boost yeah. it up, you can go on and off. What do you think about as it rides just as a regular bicycle? As, as a it? regular bicycle, okay. it's a little cumbersome. It's a little heavy. Hey, it's got plenty of power. Okay, Jamie had the opportunity to take a few laps on it. Honest opinion. It's different than what I'm used to. I mean, I ride my bike every day up here. I'll, I'll ride anywhere from 12 to 15 miles a day. And this is great, but it's just different than what I'm used to. You're also a motorhomer. Let me say, you're the guy, you own the Prevo Owners Group and Prevo stuff. You spend a lot of time on motorhomes. The way this folds down and folds in half and everything, is there a benefit, do you think, to a motor homer on a, on a, uh, that you could pretty much get two bikes in the space of one? Yes, I, I think you could do that, and I think this is a, a benefit to people that aren't used to riding all the time, that want to get out and ride wherever I, they are. People like me, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that I don't ride as often right, as you do. Right, because this will help you up the hills and just give you that little bit of extra oomph. Mm -hmm that people that aren't riding all the time need.
this is kind of neat, Andy. Okay, let's get to the bottom line. Should you buy this? Well, I got to tell you something. I'm pretty happy with it. And the main reasons I'm happy with it, that once you got through the assembly process, it's easy to ride. I can use this as an exercise bike. I can pedal. Now, I'm in a flat area now. I'm up in Petoskey, Michigan at, at uh, Hearthside Grove uh, Motor Coach Resort. It's pretty much flat here. Just last week, I was up at Mountain Falls in Lake Coxway, North Carolina. They had lots of hills and mountains. I would have loved to have had that up here. I've only tested this on flat uh, surfaces. You get about 20 miles an hour, a little bit over that on this. It accelerates very quickly. Uh, they tell you to charge this up after every use. You know, I did not get to an area where um, uh, the battery depleted. It said it can go through 800 full cycles of the battery. That's if you run all the way down and charge it, and there is no memory effect. Uh, what I also like, it, you know, for one person, you can fold it. You know, is it a little bit heavy? Yeah, but you don't want something too light. Okay, the bottom line, I'll put a buy on this. I really liked it. You know, I'm not a so-called die-hard bicycle ride, but I gotta tell you, it's comfortable, it's easy to use. Once you finally figure out the instructions and what you're supposed to do, it's fairly intuitive on here. Um, I have, I've had a pleasant experience with it. Long term, we'll find out how it goes. Now remember, if you're gonna get one of these, go to their site. Watch the video. When you get it, read the manual. I don't even know if it's available on your site. Also, take a look, and I'll have the link at the end of this video to my assembly video. This will give you, if you're not a bicycle mechanical enthusiast, this will show you what you really need to go through to get it set up. Okay, that's it for now. Now remember, the easiest way to keep posted of my new videos and stories is to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the gadget guru. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, if you like this video, you're probably going to like this one. And if you like this one, you're going to like this one too. That's it for now. I'm the gadget guru, Andy Parr.